Tuesday, I believe it's Tuesday, is the 500th anniversary of the Reformation. How many people knew that? A bunch of you knew that. And for those who don't, uh, 500 years ago, Martin Luther, an Augustinian monk, went and put 95 theses on a Wittenberg castle door. And uh, he said, these are my beefs with what's going on in the church, especially with indulgences. And uh, that started a big split. Uh, but uh, today we say that he was right on certain things. So, for example, uh, there was a, a Dominican priest named Tetzel who was going around and he was collecting certain monies with indulgences. And indulgences is a, kind of a prayer or a spiritual act that one could offer up for the salvation or help of another, even those in purgatory. And the saying was that Tetzel went around with his can and he said, as soon as a coin in the coffer rings, a soul from purgatory springs. And Martin Luther said, you know, this is really bad. This is bad. You can't buy spiritual privileges. And on that, Martin Luther was right. He was right. We shouldn't be buying spiritual privileges. Now, uh, Martin Luther did some wonderful things. He had the Bible translated into German. And so more people had access to it. And certainly he wanted to support the little people, the, the peasants, and so on. Uh, he was a scripture scholar, and he wanted righteousness. And in fact, in his era, we probably had some of our worst popes. There was a pope who had a mistress and a child out of wedlock. So, But here's uh, some of the dangers of the theology. Uh, and here's our, where, we, where we agree today and, and where we disagree. In the 1990s, there was a document signed by Lutheran Federation of Churches with a Catholic, uh, I guess, uh, congregation from Rome. And we agree on this. The first thing is a gift of mercy. The first thing is God's approach to us. God gives grace. God gives grace for faith. And so that gift of grace, that gift of mercy, is not something we earn first, it's something given first. And we celebrate that we hold that in common today. Where we differ is, well, what does virtue mean after that? Okay? And for the good Lutheran, um, it's just all about mercy, and that virtue would only be a sign that you're a converted person, but would have anything to do with salvation, whereas for a Catholic... The growth in virtue is part of salvation because it's growing into the person we're called to be in heaven. If you want to be a good piano player, you've got to practice piano. If you want to be a good basketball player, you've got to practice piano. If you want to be a virtuous person, you practice virtue, right? And so we grow in virtue, and we're growing towards the stature of our heavenly gift. Well, uh, so I want to say in today's gospel, uh, Jesus sums up the law and uh, he sums up the, the commandments into two. Love God, love your neighbor. Right? And Martin Luther did talk about mm, law versus gospel. And in his desire was for people to know mercy. That was his desire. Which commandments are in the love the Lord your God? Which commandments are under that one? Do you know? Number one, yes. Number one. Number two. And number three. You got it. Love God with your whole heart is the first three commandments, right? Love your neighbor as yourself. That's commandments number four through ten. You go look at the commandments. Number four is honor your father and mother and then don't kill, don't commit adultery, etc. It's all about your neighbor. So Jesus essentially summed up the Ten Commandments into two. Love God with your whole heart. Now, he did change one thing. When Jesus quoted Deuteronomy, he did not say exactly what Deuteronomy says. He added the word mind. Love God with your whole heart, soul, and mind, which is not in Deuteronomy. So I'd like to invite you for a moment to think about that. Loving God with our heart and our mind, our soul, and our strength. What does that mean? 
It means we need to be pure. We need to have pure hearts to desire the Lord and what the Lord desires for us and not to covet or to lust. That's a hard-fought battle. With our mind means sometimes I have to fight distractions in prayer. Do you have to do that? We don't have to do that here because we're in angels up here in the seminary. Yeah, <laughs> or at last chance mass. Sometimes loving God with our whole mind means I got to keep coming back to God in prayer. I got to fight the distraction. And one really helpful thing for that is just to say the name of Jesus. Kind of cuts through the cloud of distractions. Helps to bring us back. And with our whole soul, our whole strength, I was very edified to hear about a young woman at a wedding on Saturday, and the sister of the groom, her name's Rachel Kasurik, she was down in mission in Guatemala. And she's sort of this pretty girl with um, very clean, and here she is, and she is battling with the lice in the bed, and the ants in the suitcase, and the scorpions on the floor, and she's telling her parents, I love it. I love it. Loving God with her whole soul. So today, um, there's still a rift in the church. Unfortunately, there is a divide. I actually believe you're in your lifetime, you're going to see a reunification. I believe you're going to see it. And so we want to pray for that. And may love be our, our first overture to uh, all brothers and sisters of whatever faith to affirm what we hold in common with mutual respect and to hold proudly also what we believe as Catholics. But that first overture of love, and indeed in all situations, loving our neighbors, ourselves, loving God with our whole heart, mind, soul, and strength. Let's take a moment to meditate on that and to reflect on how you are invited to love God with your whole heart, mind, soul, and strength. 